Welcome back to the shop. This week we're going to be talking fabrication. So no, don't worry, I'm not going to be doing a review on this go-kart here. I'm just going to be using it as my first example in getting started with fabrication. So let's get started. Over time, my fabrication equipment has expanded. I started off with just a arc welder that I got from a friend of mine and I practiced a little bit on that without much success. Uh, stick welding is extremely difficult in my opinion to get started on because there's a lot of variables as the stick is burning down. You have to control the distance as well as your speed and all the other aspects that would be involved with other forms of welding. So from there, then I graduated to a Lincoln MIG 140, and that Lincoln MIG 140 is a 110 volt welder. I started off with core flux wire on that, so no shielding gas or anything like that, and that worked pretty well, and I got some decent results, so it kind of continued my interest a little bit further than that. And so I continued on that path for quite some time. Then eventually I graduated to getting a 75-25 argon mix, so I'm truly doing MIG welding now and got some MIG wire. I've played around with different uh, thicknesses of wire, things of that nature. But I think really what I want to highlight in this video is if you have an interest in doing something like that, a big project like a buggy or a car fabrication project or even large scale brackets for motorcycles or something like that, I would highly recommend picking a much smaller project to work on first, which is exactly what this cart here is. So first and foremost, I want to take a moment and thank CartFab. If you go to CartFab.com, that gentleman has published a set of free plans for this go-kart as you see it here. I have some nieces and a nephew that are in the age that they will enjoy something like this, and it was approaching Christmas time, so it seemed like a perfect opportunity to start to work on my fabrication skills a little bit more, combine the fabrication skills with the mechanical skills that are involved in making steering mechanisms and gas pedals and brake pedals, things like that all come together, and it's on a very, very small scale. My experience in building this particular cart really highlights why I would recommend if you have uh, a desire to do a bigger project, start with something small like this. Um, in between work and other items, this cart actually probably took me well over a month to build. Now, I had other things going on at the time, so you could certainly build it much faster than that. But I think it really just highlights if you wanna do a good job and you wanna do it right, Fabrication does take time and patience, so that's probably the skill that I personally need to work on the most, and if you're getting started, I would highly recommend starting small so that you get that sense of satisfaction very early on because it does take a lot of work. To cut metal at precision, to get it to fit up right, to get the welds to go through right, all of those aspects are very, very critical to the end result. Overall, I'm happy with how this cart turned out. I hope my nieces and nephew enjoy it. Obviously, I don't really care if they tear it up, which is what kids tend to do with stuff like this because it was just a fabrication project and then just something that made for a nice Christmas gift for them. So I'm going to be delivering it and hopefully they enjoy it. Uh, overall, everything is working and functioning. There are little things all over the place on this cart that I wish I could have gotten better and they just highlight examples of how those things would come into play on a larger scale with a project like a car or something like that. Getting things trued up, getting them squared, getting them to stay square as you apply heat, these are all critical aspects to fabrication and they're very difficult to achieve. Uh, I think it's very easy to go out on social media channels and see examples and get excited about what other people are posting as their experiences. But from my own personal experience, it takes a great deal of time to get good enough to actually make something that is true and straight and finished well and is going to hold up and all those aspects. This cart in particular, I actually applied too much heat and I got a bow, so then I watched some videos and I had to do some relief cuts and do some rewelding. So just things like that were very frustrating and I think they will be frustrating for anybody starting off doing fabrication. However, I did learn a lot throughout this whole experience. I did wind up learning that the settings on the chart that are on your welder are only a baseline and you should really play around with those and adjust them accordingly because it wasn't until after I got this all done that on the Lincoln 140, I kind of found some better settings that worked well for me and allowed me to burn through less on this thin of metal. 
So again, use that chart, definitely use it as a guideline, but what I would recommend is from there, get material that is the same thickness as what you're gonna be working with and play around a little bit. Experiment with you know, higher voltages, lower voltages, faster wire speeds, slower wire speeds, so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing that I think I will call out in relation to fabrication is just, you really can't have enough cutting and grinding tools because different types of cuts call for different things. I bought the Evolution saw. It's a miter saw with a steel cutting blade. I've been extremely happy with that saw because it allowed me to do the level of precision cuts that I needed to do here without having to acquire a band saw. So it also cuts wood, so I'd highly recommend that. It serves a little bit broader purpose, and so you can extend your dollar a little bit further using it for wood projects too. Just make sure that you clean up all those wood shavings afterwards so that then when you're using it for metal, the sparks don't ignite and you don't have a fire. Again, uh, the plans for this cart were free. They were online. The motors from Harbor Freight. The kit came from GoPowerSports.com. It all came together rather nicely and was relatively inexpensive, which made it a great way to practice on this, but have something that actually proves out whether or not your fabrication skills are coming to fruition. A lot of people recommend getting scrap pieces of metal and fusing them together. That's good and I did that practice as well, but I think the problem there is that you don't really get a sense of whether or not uh, your cuts are precise enough to make something like this. You don't get the feedback of when you try to hook up mechanical linkages, whether your measurements were right or not. So I think having something like this as a first fabrication project really helps because you still have to deal with all of the you know steering and mechanical components and the drivetrain as simple as it is on this cart. Uh, it's a one wheel drive system, so it's very, very simple. But again, it does bring all those components together and I think what it'll do most importantly is give you a good feel for whether or not you wanna take on a much bigger project because obviously, if you don't get through a project like this and work at the completion, then you would never wanna tackle anything bigger and you wouldn't have spent as much money or invested in it. You can always then give this away or cut the metal up and sell it as scrap or sell the motor or whatever to recoup some of your costs to bring the overall experience of it down. So again, I think personally for me, it was money well spent, but again, I do have the side benefit of it being a Christmas gift for relatives and that has a huge advantage because hopefully they'll smile when they receive it. All in all, this cart combined uh, angle cuts, straight cuts, it combined you know, simple mechanical components, throttle cables, linkages for the brakes, uh, steering mechanisms, a lot of different pieces that came together. And again, I just think it was a really, really good way to get started into this. What it did lead me to believe is that I need to complete probably one or two more smaller projects like this before I can even think about taking on uh, a project as big as like a low cost seven uh, where you fabricate the entire car frame. Uh, but again, I'll continue to practice at it. My equipment continues to grow and I'm sure I will get better as time progresses, or at least I hope I will, or I'll get frustrated trying. So again, if any of you are interested or want to get started, I would highly recommend picking a project similar to this that is smaller in scale, but does combine mechanical components, which will help you to validate the precision of your cuts. It'll also help to validate your weld strength, because obviously if it falls apart when you drive it, then your welds didn't hold up very well. So having something mechanical as a project, I think is a really great starting point. At the end of this, again, I'm not ready to tackle something as big as a car project, but it does leave me excited about the opportunity, and I will probably move on to a more complicated cart project that maybe involves suspension components and things like that to kind of step up and graduate from one project to the next. And again, as I finish those up, I will either sell them or again, give them to my relatives as they get older. Uh, either way, I'm sure there will be no problem with finding a home for the end result, but again, they'll start to validate more and more aspects of the fabrication process. So those, that's another recommendation that I would make if again, you're looking to get started into this is start really, really simple, maybe go a little bit more complicated, a little bit more complicated, and then eventually, if you're still ready or interested to take on that big project that you might have in mind, whether that's a trailer or a dune buggy, a larger scale go-kart or a car, as is in my example. Um, these again will be great stepping stones for you and I think it will go a long way towards teaching you as well as giving you a reward while you're in the learning process 
and then subsequently validate whether or not you really want to do this because it does take a lot of time and a lot of patience to get this stuff right. And I think that's something that a lot of people skim over. It's very easy to criticize others who, you know, you've seen do fabrication and maybe the project didn't turn out so well. But once you've really experienced it for yourself, you find out exactly how much goes into the smallest of details when you start doing fabrication and fitting pieces up and getting them to weld together and align and stay square. So again, just an overall great project. And again, I want to thank cartfab.com for putting these plans online. Also, there's a series of videos that he walks through a lot of aspects of this. So that was really all helpful and it was good to have kind of a guideline to go with on the first project. So I know it's not motorcycle related, but either way, I hope at least some of you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a great big thumbs up. As always, if you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button. Uh, for those of you that are staying engaged and giving us feedback through social media channels or in the comments, thank you very much, uh, especially to the one individual that kind of asked again about the big trip on the motorcycles. That kind of uh, kicked me in the butt a little bit to get back to editing on that. So I am still working on the Colorado BDR editing. I lost the original edit and had to redo it. I'm now back to the point that I was before I lost that. So I am working on it. It takes time. I really want that video to be of good quality and tell the story of the trip. So hopefully you'll enjoy that and hopefully it'll be available soon. So again, until next time, take care and in this case, fabricate and have fun.